Welcome to another episode of Dr. James Beckett Sports Card Insights. As you can see, today's title, today's issue is about shill bidding. I'm going to give you some random thoughts, what I think, what, uh, it's a little bit of a then and now episode, but more just on the issue, issue that's, uh, current on shill bidding, although I might say shill bidding has been around since since there were auctions. Uh, people always are trying to game the system. It's just gotten a little, it's perceived to be easier now uh, with eBay and third parties selling on eBay, and yet there are, uh, it is against the law, and there are penalties. So I think what we're talking about is shill bidding, uh, habitual and schematic shill bidding, not something where you didn't know any better. I would imagine you would think this doesn't sound right, bidding on my own stuff or having my wife bid on my stuff or having a, an additional account under a different name that bids on my stuff. That's would seem like your uh, your internal conscience would say I'm maybe not uh, doing this quite right. So shill bidding is when somebody bids on an item just to increase the price, and it can happen. Reg- it says reg- some of the definitions talk about regardless of whether the bidder knows the seller, but really shill bid- bidding is talking about when there's some connection between. Uh, the, the the most insidious kind is there's someone is uh, colluding or conspiring with the with the um, uh, seller the person that put up the auction item uh, to try to inflate that price or or and there are other there are other reasons for doing it as well. Uh, eBay talks about bidding in order to increase the price or the desirability or the search standing to get get some. Uh, uh, some buzz going. If well, I'm just I, I think that you're going to think, well, gee, if shill bidding is if uh, a family member or a friend is bidding, then I'll just get a friend of a friend. Uh, friends, <laughs> that probably uh, if if uh, if you do it one time, you might not get caught, but if you do it uh, habitually. Sooner or later, they will track you down because in the digital world, there's, there's uh, a trace and the patterns can be, can be tracked. There's also, and I haven't checked some of the auctions, but there is, uh, there are, it is permitted if you have a reserve auction and it's in your rules where you have reserves that the auctioneer in the fine print of the auction catalog uh, will announce that they may bid on behalf of the seller up to the reserve price to make sure it gets up to that. But they have to declare that, and that's not considered shill bidding. I don't really think that's what we're talking about. Uh, but shill bidding is typically when you're bidding on a car on a card or an item just to drive the price up and not for the purpose of buying a lot. So I, I realized that if you bid on something that you thought was too low, and you thought, wow, if that's all it's gonna go for, I'd be interested at that price. You've bid it up, but you have an intention. If you get it for that price, you'll be pleased. Even if you flip it, you weren't shill bidding, you were buying it in order to get it for yourself and not to prop up your 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 best buddy or or your uh, uncle. So if you are in an auction or you have some cards or you're bidding, you're you're either going to be the seller or in many cases now there's been this uh, growth and and uh, success of these third party auction houses that mainly specialize in in digital uh, and eBay type auctions. And then there are potential uh, bidders, potential buyers, inspectors. I, when, when I was um, in my, my second career, I did a lot of expert witnessing and consulting with attorneys, a lot of uh, complex federal 
um, court uh, trials and lawsuits, uh, some of which were involving the Postal Service and uh, uh, individuals who'd run afoul of them. The postal inspectors are are serious. They're like FBI agents. They will they 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 track down the bad guys. So you if you commit a crime and you use the post office you mail you're in trouble. So so don't do that. Uh, and again, the the best way to not get caught is not even a good way because it's it's like trying to get six degrees of separation between you and the uh, and the shill bitter and. You know, I can't remember the name of the movie, but there's this movie where, and I don't know if it's two women or two men, but they conspire to kill their spouses. And it's not each one kills the other one's spouse, so there's no connection. And so the detective is trying to figure out until they put the two crimes together and realize that the two perpetrators had met at a coffee shop or at a some some place the year before they couldn't figure out because they had no motive. Uh, so six degrees of separation, you'd think that would be good, but it won't. They can they can track that down. I had an experience uh, just recently. I sent some cards in to one of these third party auction uh, houses, uh, not one of my sponsors, but one that uh, has gets um, is, is uh, uh, high profile. And I sent in uh, several cards, and just for sake of discussion, I I gave them I gave them more than two cards. But if I gave them the, the example would be I gave them a couple of cards, both of which I thought would go for fifty or seventy five dollars. Uh, one of them went for quite a bit more than that. Now I don't think that there was any shill bidding going on because it was a legitimately tough card. The other, on the other hand, I promise you there wasn't any show bidding. It barely made the minimum. For whatever reason, it went for like $5. So, and I thought, well, gee, I didn't make anything on it. No, I actually lost money on that. The way the uh, com- commission or uh, fees are structured, I actually owe them for the privilege of having them sell my card because it sold for such a low price. The... Additional problem now in 2019 and going forward is the technology and uh, scanning and, and uh, resolution of photos is so, so excellent now that your card is uniquely identified. So if you were a shill bidder and you wound up buying it or you got it back and put it back up, there's ways to detect that that, hey, that's the same card. And then people can start putting two and two together. I just feel like um, simple lies are are bad, but convoluted lies where you're, (laughs) they're just hard to remember. You, You have to remember this big, long story and all these details, all of which are false. So it's even worse than a simple lie. And I'm wondering if you want to be friends or associates with people who knowingly break laws. It's just possible they may not be very trustworthy. So if you have somebody shill bidding for you, uh, it's possible they can turn on you, which would not be a good thing. So don't do it. I'm not advocating doing it. I'm saying that... that. Uh, uh, throughout our my corporate career with my uh, teammates at Beckett Publications, we had a slogan of of uh, get rich slow, uh, keep doing the right thing, don't try to uh, shortcut things, uh, and let it come. Just keep doing a good job, and we uh, we were uh, reasonably successful with that. When I'm bidding on an auction, uh, I've, I was looking online uh, for some what people were saying about shill bidding, and some people were talking about, well, I don't really worry about it. I just put in my max bid, and and then uh, I'll either win or lose based on that. Well, I, I actually don't do max. I've hardly ever done max bid, uh, and uh, because of that, I've lost a couple lots. That uh, again, I don't think they were shill bid. It just somebody wanted it and. They kept bidding when I after I went to sleep. Um, on the other hand, they give a max bid. 
there, there are, I've, I know that I've been in bidding situations where I bid, and when you get that very quick bounce back that, oh, you've been outbid, you know that's not somebody sitting by the computer. It's an automated thing. So I advise to only, know, only um, use the auctions that you know and trust. Um, if you've dealt with them in the past and you know them personally, especially, that's a good thing. What do the auctions have to lose? And again, I'm not speaking about my uh, my uh, my sponsors here, which are uh, Heritage Auctions and Huggins and Scott, and uh, also Beckett Media, Beckett Grading, Beckett Authentication. You know, Beckett, my old company does auctions as well. ComC, they do portfolio sales, which are kind of a, a bidding thing, but but mostly fixed price and tops. Panini and Upper Deck, their their card companies, and my other sponsors are are Burbank Sports Cards and Mike Stadium Sports Cards, a couple of card shops. So, what do the auctions have to lose? What does the shill bidder have to lose? Well, uh, I believe reputation is worth something, probably a lot, and I think freedom is worth even more. Uh, it has happened before, folks. There, there, uh, there, there's been prison time served if you uh, have, or get caught with uh, with uh, shill bidding and other uh, criminal activity. So that's it for shill bidding. I may address it again. Again, I'm always happy to receive feedback from uh, episodes that we deal with. I'm not saying I have all the info or uh, the only source, but I'm trying to shed some light on some of these issues in ways that uh, perhaps others aren't doing. And uh, especially in this case, it might be an ongoing conversation. So I'd like to stay with positive tone. Uh, and I do think the hobby is 99% wonderful, but there's uh, a 1% group out there, 2%, whatever it is, that's um, that uh, unfortunately sometimes get the headlines. So uh, keep doing the right thing. Get rich slow. Uh, Enjoy collecting. And uh, thank you for listening. I'll be back tomorrow.